Now, tonight, we are so excited to introduce our first guest. He's been on our show before, and he's here again to lend his expertise. Please welcome celebrity vocal coach, James Luo. Yeah. All right, so this is episode one of the new thing we're doing here. <clears throat> Raw tracks. And we're going to just show making music. And, uh, well, we kind of went over it in the last video, so we don't have to reiterate. I ended up buying a softbox, whoa, <laughs> to put there. I just didn't like the way it looked. So this is the setup. kind of can see behind it now into it. So that's kind of my little mission control. So I've got the softbox kind of illuminating the whole room. And then I've got the panel light as the main light on. And then the ring light is still, is just, no, I'm not using it right now. Um, so I brought it in here so that we can kind of see guitars. And I can obviously raise the ISO. There you go. Anyway, we'll, we'll kind of figure it out. So what I wanted to do was go over a little bit of the setup so that when I start making these videos, if people have questions about how, how is this routed or how are you doing it, you just kind of go back to this video so I don't have to keep explaining it, right? So, and then I also I got stuff here for the camera, for the, for the, for the iPhone to video the guitars or the, you know, the, the pedal board and everything. So it's, we're getting it together. So, yeah, it's a lot of guitars. A, kind of a sad little keyboard here with a sustain pedal on it. Just got Clusens on the Jazzmaster. I love this guitar. Oh my god. Yeah. All right, so the way this thing works is we're Pro Tools. Uh, the guitars are going into uh, the Burl B2, 1 and 2. So I usually do 2 amps, sometimes 1 amp, but usually 2. So the way it works is you plug your guitar in, you go into the pedal board, you go through the pedal board, and you come out and you go through all the effects. And for, for heavies, I can just use the tone bone and just go direct. Um, I don't really see that it, it, I don't really hear a difference. It's so weird, like so minor. Um, so anyway, there it is. So, you know, the usual kind of compressor, EQ, distortion, fuzzy, small clone and, and a phase 90 and then this is it comes up to here and from the Mobius down it's stereo all the way out to the rig to whichever amp you want um, and I run the the uh, even tides with the app and I can run the 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 Strymons here with the app but I kind of have gotten really good at just running the Strymons on the Strymons um, and then it comes out left and right out of the big sky Oops, autofocus didn't like that uh out of the big sky and then one of them goes into the tone bone here and the other one just goes straight into the amp so one goes straight into an amp one goes from the reverb into the tone bone and then into the second amp and the, the reason why is because i've got a ground lift and a polarity right there i can just click and get rid of any noise um my five main amps or my five amps uh Rev G triple, a Mark Cameron modded 800, an AC30, a 77 50 watt JMP, completely stock, and a 68 reissue deluxe reverb. That's pretty much all I need. I mean, I guess you could get crazy and want other things, but that's really for what I do. That's that's all I need. And then I've got. Uh, not only a volume pedal, but I've got expression pedals. I've got a separate expression pedal for each one of the Strymons, and then I've got a mission control for the even tides. So that's that's it. So everything goes into the amps. Then the amps can connect. This is super whack, but it works. These are the backs of the amps. They're they're right here. And just label like that's the back of the JMP. And then these are my cab one and cab two. I just click it. You know, I mean, I was looking at getting the amp heat like six months ago. I was like, Ugh, it's like two grand. I'm like, forget it. I'll just click them. So there you go. So that's how you connect to the cabinets. Then it comes into here and I've got two cabinets. I've got uh, an oversized Mesa 
with an XY of vintage 30 and greenback. And I've got inside the tent, I've got a standard or what they call a traditional Mesa, more of the size of a Marshall, XY pattern of greenback and vintage 30. And I've got an assortment of microphones all phased. And all the microphones come out here to the mic pre's. And I'm using uh, a couple of Neves, a couple of Aphexes, and a couple of the audience. And then they come out of here and they go into here. This is really was has made a huge difference in the whole tracking. Because I was, I mean, for years we were, we were, uh, I was tracking every microphone, you know, going through my, you know, I got to find the, you know, you know, in the, in the pursuit of tone, we do a lot of silliness. So, you know, you, yeah, on a rock track, I'd have like, you know, 45, 40 tracks of guitars because it'd be like six or seven tracks and each track had three or four. My, it was just ridiculous. And, you know, it wasn't any fun anymore. So the way it works now is that each one of these microphones come here and then I basically just have the pad all, you know, all the way off no there's no volume and the uh yeah the pads in and and no volume on the gain so you don't you're not getting kind of like that double preamp thing yeah preamp right so um that's it so here's the four microphones that are on the cab that's in the tent i've actually got one mic on each uh speaker so i can and it's a 57 and a 421 on a green back right here here and here and then I've got a 201, which is, I think, a Bayer Dynamic and a 421 on the Vintage 30s. And then this is the two that are on the, the, the oversize that's out, that's not in the tent. And that's a 57 and a PR20, like a Heil. And that's it. So that's the, you know, so I can, you know, I can turn them down and I can, here's, you know, the 57 on the green back of the one in the tent. And then here's this and whatever. And the way I've got it working is... Uh, so this is these are the four for my uh, for cab one. It's in the tent, and they're all uh, panned left. And then here's the two on the outer one, and they're panned right. So then what happens is that becomes your master out for uh, you know cab one, which is in the tent, and there's the out for cab two. So that's it. And then those two. So then those two come out and go straight into the burls. And uh, if, you've ne if you've never heard one of the most gorgeous sounding marshals on the face of the earth into a neve, into a burl, it's, it's a pretty nice experience. So that's, that's the guitar routing. Um... We're, I gotta make. I'm making. I gotta start doing some programming, but that's yeah. So that's the setup. Um, you know, obviously nut nutcase with the guitars, and um, that's really the whole. That's the whole deal. So and 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 then again, here's for the cameras. It's gonna have, you know, we've got the mics and the lights and the stuff set up. I've also got this mic here that we'll be recording the audio for the videos. We'll be going over here and through the, uh, the microphones actually going into one of the audience pre's, and then I jump it right into the 1176. I've got an old Yuri Rev F 1176, and uh, it's going into this, and then I, I, tr I record the, the audio of us talking in the room on garage band and then uh yeah and then that's it and then we pull everything into to pro tools or whatever or final cut and we make it happen we're also doing full screen capture here with camtasia so there's going to be a few sources the not, thing i bought which is cool is this mic mute so that shuts the mic off in the room so it's really nice because that if, if you ever made videos like this you you know what goes into the editing because you got to kill the live mic when you play. <laughs> so if you're talking and playing and talking and playing and playing and talking and talking and playing, it's it can take a couple of hours to really clean it up. Now it's just going to be like 
just clean it up on the spot, you know? So, yeah. So I guess if anybody's got any questions or, you know, whatever. But I've got a girl coming out from L.A. this week, and I'm mad dashing to get these songs ready. So I may shoot something over the weekend, but if if not, next week we're going to start rolling out some videos. Basically, we're just going to be writing songs on the fly and, you know, tracking the guitars and, you know, tracking everything and programming drums. And I'm going to have my buddy Tarek's going to be playing drums on some of them and he's going to be shooting video at his uh, studio and um, sending it over. And we're just going to start making some cool videos. I'll be mixing and guitar nerd stuff and singing and... But less product-y things. Yeah, it'll still be a little bit. Everybody's like, oh, hey, let's shoot this out. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not closed off to anything. I'm just, I just don't want that to become the, what the whole thing is about because it's, there's just, there's just enough of that. So anyway, there you have it, man. Let's see if I can make the kick and snare sound loud. Oh, it's not on. Oh, I'm in the wrong session. Sorry about that. Anyway, and I've been totally learning Superior Drummer and digging in and getting good with Omnisphere. So a lot of cool stuff is happening. It's going to be fun, man. So if you guys have ideas for videos, throw them out there. So, but this is, this is now going to be considered episode one. Uh, raw tracks is what we're calling it because it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be kind of the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's not going to be... Uh, you know, no big editing and no, you know, crazy transitions and slow-mo. And we don't have a drone. So it's just going to be making music. Anyway, peace.